Today's video is all about our machine gunner from Malibu. I'm talking, of course, about Craig McConnell, the Sarge with the codename Rock and Roll. Let's talk about him. But before we do, I want to thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether it's your first time here or you're back for more. Don't forget to share this and subscribe so you don't miss all of our videos we make each week just like this one. Let's get on to the video. As one of the original Joes, Rock and Roll appeared in the very first issue of the G.I. Joe, a real American hero comic book, all the way back in 1982. But before he helped the Joe team rescue Dr. Burkhart in that debut issue of the comic series, Craig was surfing in Malibu, California. He was an avid weightlifter, loved cars and motorcycles, in fact he had a 1956 Bel Air Nomad that he'd throw his surfboards on to head down to the beach. Craig's also a bass guitarist for a rock band that played the local spots in Malibu, hence his codename. It was one day when Craig was out surfing with his friend Manny, and Manny got stuck under a dock. He was seriously injured, so this local hero, all the surfers knew him, everybody in town, named Shotgun Don ended up rescuing Manny. Shotgun Don was an army ranger, and this left a lasting impression on Craig, and this was actually the catalyst for him signing up for the military service himself. Craig enlisted, graduating top of his class from advanced infantry training at Fort Benning and covert op school as well. Colonel O'Neill from US AMC says that Craig is a man of contradictions. He's cunning but naive, obstinate but pliable, forceful but shy, proud but self-deprecating. That brief summary really gives you insight into his psyche and some of his motivations on the battlefield. Like, he's super loyal to his team, and this could actually impact primary mission objectives. His Action Force Intelligence profile says that Craig hails from Truro, Cornwall in England, which is fine because it's right on this bay called Carrick Roads, which has an ubiquitous amount of surfing and surf shops for him to enjoy, so that part of his life is still the same. It says he loved rock and roll and liked the loud noises so much that he joined up with artillery, both towed and self-propelled. He later went on to infantry to serve as a squad machine gunner, where he saw service in Brunei during the Aden campaign. He quickly became a force multiplier, wheeling his MGs and miniguns all over the battlefield. So this all led him to the G.I. Joe team, whether it was Action Force or his U.S. service, being one of the OGs. In fact, he was on the mission where Snake Eyes was trapped while rescuing Scarlet in the helicopter, lost his speech, and it also disfigured him. Rock and Roll later told Scarlet that he saw Snake Eyes carrying her out of the helo wreckage while his head was still in flames. So then we get to the first issue of the Hama comic book series. For those first few issues, Rock and Roll heavily used the Ram motorcycle with a 20mm Vulcan cannon sidecar attached to it. In the mission to save Dr. Burkhart, he provided suppression support for Stalker's assault team. In the next story, Rock and Roll headed out to the Middle East with Snake Eyes and Scarlet to get this MacGuffin device called the Hot Potato. Snake Eyes and Scarlet were pinned down. Craig ran the Hot Potato back to the tent, grabbed his bike, and rode out back to get them. Those two only had two bullets left, meant for themselves, but Gung Ho flew over a dune, took out Sharif's forces, and rescued his two friends just before they had to use those two bullets on themselves. A few issues later, Hawk pulled them out of snow training for an op at Kennedy Space Center, protecting a satellite launch from Cobra. A couple issues later, found Rock and Roll on the primary assault team, taking down a Cobra stronghold in Midtown Manhattan. And in the 11th issue, when Gung Ho debuted, it was Rock and Roll who didn't know how to take this new bare-chested jarhead running around in the snow. He said this to Hawk in between sea ration bites. And Hawk's reply was simple. Don't talk with your mouth full. It's disgusting. So he jumped on the battle bear with Snowjob and he asked him if Gung Ho was from Flake City. Then they end up talking about Gung Ho's fashion model sister and Gung Ho's interested. Rock and Roll doesn't like Gung Ho at first until Gung Ho took out that cobra nest by himself. It impressed him, but he also said he wanted to celebrate with Gung Ho's sister. And that's when they reveal his sister's nine years old. <laughs> but the joke was on him and they all had a good laugh at the end. He was firepower for Alpha Team on the op to pull Snake Eyes, Breaker, Gung Ho, and Stalker out of Real Lindo. He was a clutch providing Overwatch support to the newly debuted Cover Girl in her Wolverine as they defended the US Capitol from Cobra invasion forces. In issue 18, Rock and Roll and Torpedo took a Manta to Coney Island Beach. Notice the girls, but were there to rescue Snake Eyes from Quinn and Destro, who'd been missing since that Real Lindo mission. But Destro went off in an ice cream truck to chase Scarface in his pink Cadillac. Yes. The Joes jumped in an APC to give chase and took out the caddy, but they escaped anyway and they fled to Tripoli. The Joes quickly loaded up a C-140 to head right after them. Someone asked where Torpedo was and Rock and Roll commented that he was performing maneuvers in the sand already, referring to those Coney Island girls I just mentioned. Typical of his character. But Rock and Roll ended up taking out Destro's Hiss Tank with his bite cannon. Issue 22 is the issue where Roadblock debuted as the new heavy machine gunner, and this was a turning point for Rock and Roll because while he would use his heavy weaponry later on, this is where Larry Hama wrote in a letters page a few issues later that Rock and Roll moved to an LMG role, a light machine gunner role, with Roadblock taking over as the heavy. Rock and Roll flew front seat gunner for Zap in one of the Dragonflies as they tracked Cobra Commander to Zartan's lair in the Everglades. After the dedication of the new pit, Rock and Roll and the rest of the OG team were promoted one pay grade and assigned as the new admin arm 
of the pit. But Hawk, speaking for them all, said, they're field troops. They want to be where the action is. And it wouldn't be until G.I. Joe discovered the location of the town of Springfield and their subsequent invasion that Rock and Roll returned to the field. However, Rock and Roll Clutch Breaker took his Bel Air to drive her across the country during this downtime from New York all the way to California to go surfing, where they quickly ran into some dreadnoughts and they gave chase on two wheels. <laughs> they crashed after seeing a Zartan projection, this uh, semi-truck from hell basically, and they were transported away by EMS, but a license plate that Rock and Roll saw triggered his memory, so he took over the ambulance, chased down the knocks on their bikes, even as they attempted to penetrate the base. Later, Rock and Roll and Clutch were on leave, so they decided to drive to Broca Beach. But what they didn't realize at the time was that Broca Beach was another Cobra front until they saw the BBPD wearing Cobra rings. So they were quickly captured by the Dreadnoughts and brainwashed by the Baroness who had an old device of Dr. Venom's. Well, they were rescued, but that wasn't the end of it. Once at the pit, Cobra activated their brainwash programming and sent them into this berserker rage. But they both overcame the programming because, as Psychout analyzed, their own morality overrode the Cobra programming. In issue 97, he was with Chuckles and Clutch in Montreal helping Mounties take down a Cobra hideout where Rocky tries out his new saying, Drop or get dropped. This is actually Rocky's V2 character. He got this whole Jesse Ventura from Predator thing going on. Rock and Roll later found himself in Trucial Abysmia in the middle of a conflict that led right into the Battle of Benzene. He was also with the Joes who went to Destro's castle in Transcarpathia to help him defend it from Cobra attack, and then he went on to another Cobra-controlled town called Millville. He was sent with Stalker to Arlington to pay respects to their fallen comrades, and remained with the team until they were decommissioned in 1994 with issue 155. Now, non-canon, DDP, image, early IDW time, Rock and Roll served as a field commander, but as the ranks were cut, relegated to active reserve. But back in Homiverse, Rock and Roll quickly shows back up in issue 157, where Hawk meets up with him in DC, just as Rock and Roll in his Hawaiian shirt and combat boots, of course, had to take out some pursuing Cobras with his case weapon and a concussion grenade. In the police cruiser, he takes out his AMG, which he seems to always have with him, and yells, Eat hot lead, Cobras, as he fires out the door. And then the next issue, he's with Roadblock at Destro's castle to rescue Duke. In 181, he's with Clutch and SUV trailing some CGs out of Broca Beach. They're spotted, and a brief firefight ensues, and he, of course, has his MG still with him, loaded with armor piercing and tracer rounds that he unleashes on the CG's Mercedes. A couple issues later, they've tracked them to Luck, California, which is now Rancho Corba, where Rock and Roll manages to escape with one of the captured kids there, but Clutch and the other two kids are captured, so they go back in, breach, and find Clutch strapped to a table, having succumbed to one of Dr. Mindmender's machines. Brainwashed, Clutch gives Craig a nasty right hook and lays him on the floor, so they wind up back at the base in Utah, where they go for a debrief with Stalker and Psych Out, but Scarlet and Hawk, who are watching on the monitors, red flag them, suspecting the two of brainwashing, and it wouldn't be until a malfunction with the lift, where Rock and Roll gets zapped by a live wire, this was issue 192, where he remembers what happened in Rancho Corba, so it's clear to the red flag, quickly deployed to Sierra Gorda with a large force of Joes, but are taken hostage in an old terrodrome. He got the variant cover on issue 223, an action figure cover. In 243, he does a halo jump into Trucial Abysmia, where the embassy had been attacked, and as they attempt to exfil, Long Range calls him Rocky. Rocky's manning a truck bed mounted, Russian issue 12.7 Mike Mike. This is the issue where McWorry blows himself up to save the Joes, citing John 15. 13. In 247, while Don Moreno is having flashes of Snake Eyes memories, she sees a memory of the time inside the Hilo with Stalker, Rock and Roll, Grunt, and Scarlet. It's a very early Joe mission from before the first issue. He shows up in 251 talking with Stalker, who's having a nasty zombified nightmare, suggesting talking to Psych Out and getting some PTSD treatment. Said he goes to Spirit. In 263, during the memorial issue, Clutch has a cookout where Rocky shows up, but somehow he's also at the ceremony in Utah, so uh, editorial mistake, I think. Unless Rocky now has supersonic speed or teleportation powers. In 266, nothing happens, but he's bringing sandwiches to the pit. And in the latest issue I read, 268, Cobra's attacking the pit, and Rock and Roll is taken out, but right back in the fight. Like, no damage at all, really, but a blast like that should have injured him, so along with the supersonic speed, maybe he has a bulletproof skin. But in his defense, he was a part of Armor Tech, Star brigade and supersonic fighters so maybe he got some powers there anyways in the sumbo cartoon the episode called jungle trap rock and roll says his hometown is la los angeles which isn't exactly right but fine because malibu is just north of la it's really just a short drive by the water up the pch in the series though he's voiced by frank welker who also voiced wild bill and megatron
In 2009, Hasbro changed Craig's codename to Bench Press. Well, that's not entirely true. What happened was that Hasbro had some trademark issues outside of the United States with the rock and roll name, so they changed its codename to Bench Press for the ROC line, but forgot to change its government name, so it's supposed to be a different character, but also bears the Craig McConnell government name. Thus, I have to mention it here. They forgot about the name, probably because they were so busy giving him that chainsaw for whatever reason. So they named him Bench Press because he likes to work out, obviously, but I suppose it could be an homage to the public that had gotten the license for G.I. Joe back in 1999, before Devil's Do. Bench Press Studios, it was called. They went bankrupt, lost the license, and that's how it wound up at Devil's Do. It was a crazy time when DDP's license had expired, IDW was coming on all while they needed to seek new licenses and pivot the figure line to align with the first film's release. Another reason for their drive into those international territories. But anyways, friends, that's a wrap on this one. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, corrections, and all your suggestions down below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, share this with your your friends share this on your social media so you can be a part of all of our videos as well that we make new and old i'm jesse this is jls comics and i'll see you soon